Right, so welcome to another one of the build series. So, what we're looking at now is the 12 volt electrical system as a whole. Because I think a lot of people, uh, there's, there's so many different options and so many different ways of doing this. Uh, not all of them are right, not all of them are wrong. Uh, most of them work and that's the bit that confuses people because they'll look at a few different options and people swear by it and say it works and it does. Um, I just think there's better ways to do certain things okay so by that uh, what I mean is um, the system as a whole if you can cherry pick a few key parts you'll make your life a lot lot easier so for a start on this vehicle We've got a 360 watt Victron solar panel. That's pumping power down uh, to the leisure battery system. Okay, so that's one source of getting the energy in. Brilliant for when you stood. Um, it means it's charging all the time. Even this time of year, I'm still leaving the fridge on. Um, I've got the lights. Uh, I use this as a bit of a room to do a bit of editing and things. So I've still got that power there, even though the vehicle's not moving, which is, it's brilliant and a lot of people underestimate the solar system because they've never had a good one and that's hands up my, at myself I've never had a good solar system till now so it was always just a little top up um, to kind of counteract how much you're losing whereas now the system I've got puts far more in than what I can use so that's the difference between an okay system and a good system the next thing from there is the control units. So from the Victron solar panel, I've got a Victron control unit, solar controller. What that then does is it will put in on demand through the shunt and charge the batteries. Okay, so that's how it gets down into there. As well as that, so you can utilize every bit of power because when you are off grid and you're not plugged into the shore, anything like that, you're gonna try and need, you're gonna need to get power from anywhere you possibly can. So while ever this engine's running on this vehicle, that's also putting up to 30 amps into the batteries as well. So if I'm driving along, can still get solar while I'm driving, that's pumping in if it's sunny, as well as 30 amps from the vehicle, um, which which means there's power coming in from every direction. The only thing that I haven't got on this one yet is a dedicated shore power charger um, so I can plug into the house I can plug into a site things like that and that's purely because the system that I've got works so well I've never gone below 95% on these batteries so it's just not necessary so they're the two sources that I've got power coming in from there I've got the Ecotree battery system okay so I've gone to lithium I've gone to two lithium batteries at 110 amps it's totally over the top for what I need. Um, I've replaced 210 amp lead acid batteries. Thought, well, bonus, I'll go for double the usable power by getting two more 110 amp, but going to lithium. Uh, but realistically, it's, it's not even double. It's probably more than triple the usable power that I had before. It's phenomenal. If you want to know more about the batteries, have a look at a previous video where I talk about those batteries specifically it's it's mind-bending what they will actually do um so yeah that's when when we come to the daf that's one of the first things that's going on is those batteries so once you've got the batteries there that is what i call the infrastructure so you've got the solar panels you've got the charging you've got the controllers and you've got the battery from that energy bank that you've got there from them batteries you then need to put that around the vehicle. And this is the bit where I think most people fail. Um, cabling is important with 12 volt. You can go very, very short distances on thin cable before you'll notice issues, i.e. Um, there'll be too much draw, so you can cause heat, which is a fire risk. Uh, as well as that, you're gonna get voltage drop uh, if you go any distance because um, the voltage will drop down very, very quickly. So for the people that plug fridges in the boots of the vehicles or the backs of the vehicles if you ever notice that on the volt gauge or anything like that at the rear when the fridge is running you're very very low on power but you know that them batteries are full at the front or the, the vehicle's even running it's because the cable supply in it is far too thin and it's not allowing enough amperage to that that particular power outlet me personally um, if you want to do it on a budget get some heavy duty jump leads, six meter ones. You've, that's probably the cheapest way 
to get a good thick ampage cable. Um, the downside of that is they tend to be quite thick shrouds, um, but the inside of it is thinly stranded, it's good cable. For short distances, you don't need to go huge with that. There's a whole, whole load of information you can go from there. What I like to do personally is anything within two meters of the battery, I'll try and go to a, around a two mil cable if I can, usually a two five, uh, and that's a flex cable, and it wants to be fine stranded cables. Um, anything that's gonna be of any distance, what I tend to do is I will have either thicker cables going to higher ampage units, i.e. the fridge, the TV, things like that, or the night eater. Everything else is lighting, uses a lot less, so you can get away with smaller cables. And if you do have to have everything from the rear of the vehicle and the batteries at the front, or vice versa, it might be worth having a larger cable going to a point, having connectors there, and then going from a smaller cable onwards so you don't get the voltage drop. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're costing things, because cable can be quite expensive. So when we're routing the cables, this is where I find a lot of people do a very bad job. Um, and some will argue it's okay. Uh, camper vans, it seems to be the done thing. Um, overlanders tend to be a lot better at it just purely because of the terrain you drive on. So you'll get the, uh, the corrugations and the rough lanes, things like that, where you're gonna get the jiggling. And it's the jiggling and the constant wearing, or if something falls on top of an item and you're going down the road, that's when stuff gets to wear through and cause vehicle fires. So this is one where fusing, I can't emphasize enough about fusing, uh, making sure you've got your fuses at either end, making sure that's correct, uh, making sure you've got fuses, the correct fuses for each individual item. And that's where this comes in. And this, for a beginner, makes life very, very, very easy. And it's, for what you get, it's very good value for money, I think, because you can get the cheap Chinese fuse boards that I've used on multiple vehicles. You get them from, you can get them as cheap as like 10 quid, up to like 30 quid for one with a couple of gauges, sockets, switches on. They're okay, but they make a mess of the wiring, which is potential for issues. It's okay, again, it's okay, but it's not very tidy. Uh, it's not very easy to fault find if there's issues and you have to drop something forward. Um, and I don't think they're the best quality parts. What I've gone to now, and this is so good I've got two, uh, and I'll be buying a third one as well, uh, is the Oxbeam control unit. So this is your next step from the batteries, is your fuse board. You can get the cheap fuse boards, and then you can have a switch panel, but then you're going up to the fuse board, over to the switch, from the switch to the unit, so there's a lots of twos and fro's. The beauty of this unit, and the reason this is so good, you get the stickers that go over the switches. Pick the wrong box up here. <laughs> you get multiple spare fuses, which are the correct size. You get mounting plates. Now this alone gives you an idea of the quality of the actual thing itself. You know what it's like when you get um, Chinese products. The, 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 there's no middle ground, I don't think. They either go one way or the other. They either go for cheap mass produced or very high quality. And Oxbeam, everything I've had so far seems good, good quality. This is by far the best quality, but proper, proper mounting plates. So this is for the switch panel, which you can adjust it. So for your average person, this will be on the dashboard at any angle that they want to. Me personally, I've mounted to the wall because it's a camper fan. And this is for your fuse board. So you're not stuck to just mounting it straight to the, the wall. You could mount it to the wall and in front of you so it's, it's, it's right in your face so you can see what you're doing. Um, give you plenty of fixtures and fittings. Let me just grab my other one now. So again with the quality, this is how the box comes. Open it up. Unlike a lot of the cheap eBay stuff that comes in a box or a brown paper bag with a bit of bubble wrap, proper catalogue, proper instruction books, proper nice switches with the see-through panels you get a list of all the things that they do okay so here you go proper proper instructions the you can see how they've got the mounting plates things like that 
it is proper and they give you all the options they give you the ratings for everything it's just decent anyway so another thing good fixtures and fittings they even give you heat I mean, who, who puts heat shrink in decent like i said before you've got all your mounting plates your brackets things like that this is your control cable okay so it's got a nice braided cover to it um, proper waterproof oh the waterproof water resistant but they've got nice little o-ring on there nice connectors just done well the main control unit itself okay this is why i like this so if you put this on your dashboard rather than having loads of switches and things going all over that replaces an entire switch panel so you've got a master on and off which turns things on on and off then you've got your individual switches if you have say these two switched on and you just turn it off when you turn it back on again those two come back on straight away so it does re it re retains the memory of it the fuse board itself very nice unit so you've got big 12 volt in so this goes through a fuse which they actually supply to your battery uh, the negative to the earth which uh, i do straight back to the battery again it makes its own contained system and i can't emphasize how your own contained system is so much better so many people earth everything into the bodywork around it and it fails over time if you can run a pair and then you come back to here you can see here you've got pause neg pause neg pause neg so you bring the positive and the negative sorry i'm pointing if you can bring the positive and the negative for each device so say you've got night heater pause and neg tv pause and neg fridge pause and neg it's so easy to mark that up with a sticker fridge tv whatever you want here you can mark the cable up with it on then if you ever have to fault find remove stuff because I've, I've done this at two o'clock in the morning when i've been driving somewhere where i've had electrical issues and you have to start testing and tracing if you've got things labeled and a dedicated area for it how much easier is that when you can go just in the cupboard or under your seat box or anywhere like that because let's face it land rover defender something like that you wire everything to your seat box here and then just run one cable up to your dashboard how easy is that so again pause neg pause neg pause neg so you have everything coming down either side and in it is as easy as that as you can see down here multiple fuses so you can put the right size fuse in for what you need you've got the bigger fuses there and then this is the positive and negative that you go from your battery into here so you've got everything that you need if you put somewhere near your battery that to go into there it, it just works the only thing for a camper van that changes things full disclosure is that's your switch live okay so what that does is that goes to your ignition live so when you turn your ignition on it powers this on which is awesome if you're running light bars and spotlights for me personally when I'm in here and I've got my switch panel over there I want this on when the ignition's off I don't want to be turning that electrical system on so what I've done I've run a pair from the battery uh, I've come in with one to this and back out again and all I've done at the other end of it there's a switch so I've got a fly lead with a switch on which activates and deactivates this so when i want to totally isolate this for when i'm driving or anything like that if i wanted to i can just switch it off if i'm parked up switch it on leave it on the drive switch it on whatever and then that gives you a totally independent electrical system no messing nice neat tidy so what a lot of people do which burns my head out is once they've come from the fuse board they'll then just take a piece of flex and wire it into whatever they want you'll lift seats up in camper vans and you'll just see random cables just wheeling away to wherever the device is and that's great when there's absolutely nothing in the vehicle me personally it costs very very little and it also makes things easier in the long run to run either a trunk in or a conduit i like flexi copex um, there's multiple different names for it and i buy what's called a contractor pack 
um, and basically from that you will get a big loop of flexible copex you'll get some saddles which is what you attach to the wall and then put the copex in and you also get some fittings to go into the end of the uh, junction boxes so let's have a look at that now this isn't finished I'm on with it now so you can see where I'm going with it and what I'm trying to achieve with it I just think this is a better option than just having cable strewn about so as you can see here we've got the battery from the battery we're going up to the fuse board here from the fuse board you can see we've got copex just here that goes up to the solar panels and we've also got copex that runs along here through the units so this is what I'm talking about if you just run through here with no protection this wiggles can you see how much protection that nice snug fit and that this unit's now got there's nothing rubbing there's nothing gonna get chafed there's nothing in a trap it, it just it's one more layer we'll come along here taking the lid off here for you we've got the proper fittings that come in electrical joint box this is domestic um, it, it totally works though and instead of just having random sockets again you put the lid on here we've got one that's marked up fridge one that's marked up TV so I know that that socket correlates to here where I've got say side light we can turn that on you get the nice little positive light on we've got the fridge turn the fridge on and off blow air he heater PA system um, which I can't actually remember what I've wired in there oh it's TV PA systems TV because they didn't have one for that uh, underglow which is the interior light um, and the camera which is my CCTV system one beautiful feature of this is can you see how bright these panels are uh, when there's actually a photo cell in here so when it gets really really bright these get brighter when it gets dark it, it adjusts itself to the correct amount I thought that it was faulty at first till I realized that there was actually a little photo cell where is it can't remember anyway there's a photo cell in there very clever stuff but as you can see that's how I do the cabling around a vehicle so little bits like this for the TV this TV is bust I've been fault finding on it um, this isn't good enough so this is typical of where things are going to get pinched and broken so what's going to happen is I'm having a cupboard made for the corner here and what, what's going to happen is there'll be a hole in the top here there'll be flexi copex that goes down and then that'll go in it'll be threaded through all nice all protected I'll show you these for sale on another site let's try not to get the name on there but they are running at and if you can see that 185 pounds uh, we'll come off there and then we'll go into which one was it I think it was this one here um, so through the link in the description you can get these for $139 however uh, $139 is around £102 and then with the link below you get 10% off as well so for around let's round it up a little bit I think it's about £95 um, you get one of these okay um, it's half of what they're getting sold for in the UK and like I say this isn't your cheap plastic one this is aluminium this is proper uh, it's, it's just a far higher quality and um, as you can see here yes I got sent one but as well as that I've bought my own as well because I've got one in the back of here now I'll be running a 24 volt one in the cab of the dash to do all the light bars and things I'll also be running one in the rear of the camper as well um, possibly two depending on how much stuff I've got in there um, and plus I might have a power outlet at the front and one at the rear we'll see um, but yeah that's how much I like them I just think it's a very 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 tidy option and um, this gives you a perfect example of how simple it is from the battery through the fuses to here from here out and you've got your separate switch I just love the separate switch and there is cheaper versions of this um, with the little push buttons the trailing lead to a little board but the <laughs> it's one of them things yeah they're cheaper and I can see why they're cheaper and if that's your budget you've got fair one however this is the safety of your vehicle if that makes sense so when you come into something that's that's actually high quality that's proper with proper fuses proper everything 
it's just mad not to get the high quality one and you can tell you know when you're bending cable that it's done properly you look at the crimps you look at the sleeving what i'm getting at is please don't set fire to your vehicles people it's it's so so easy to make something work and you think that it's okay um so yeah just do it right please please put that extra bit of protection in put that bit of conduit in put the bit higher quality in if you can i've done it myself on cheaper systems and it does work that's why i'm emphasizing go to your budget i get that but if it's the difference between saving up for another week or two weeks and putting the better one in when it comes to something like this just do that because you'll use something and it'll either not work right it'll break or when it does break you can't fault find it or something like that and you'll be kicking yourself you didn't spend the extra 30 40 quid and just do it right um, same with any of the items now there's something you can't skimp on and electrical is one of them so if this has been of any use to you give us a like give us a comment the analytics always help uh, and if I don't know if you noticed this uh, but a lot of people are getting notifications as soon as I put a video up or it's getting notified days after uh, I, I know this is a big big ask but if you can watch it sooner rather than later it helps me no end because if everybody watches it in one big bulk youtube goes oh this is popular and pushes it whereas i think because it spreads my notifications through a few days what's happening is people are going on and they are watching it but because everybody's not watching it together youtube doesn't get the instant hit of likes comments watch time and all the rest of it and they're not pushing it further forward so if you could do that you'd help me out no end um because quite a lot of people are telling me as well that are doing youtube the numbers just aren't there at the minute and i think it's down to this whole apocalypse thing um youtube are pushing and pushing and pushing the ads and they're basically just trying to piss everybody off to the point where they subscribe and get the youtube subscription um and by doing that it ups the value of their company um and you get to watch this without all the ads on um or alternatively go on my patreon and you get to watch it before it comes out here anyway with no ads <laughs> plug uh, but now in all seriousness uh, i think that's what it is so the analytics at the minute are crap so yeah it's a quick put together video because uh one they sent me this out quite a while ago um and yes i've fitted one yes i've been running one for quite a while um but i have got the other one sat here ready to go on awesome bit of kit thank you very much for sending that out Oxbeam. um very very nice people to deal with very nice and they, they know the product's good so that's always a bonus um probably see more of their products in the future um just because it is good that flashy light bar that i used to have on uh the front of this which is going to go on the rear of this um uh, that's Oxbeam as well so um if you're on the website from what i've been told if you're in the us because i think it's a us kind of branded thing you hit the us um icon for delivery things like that if you are uk hit the china one and they'll send it straight from china straight through to you uh, and that's how you get it that way so hopefully this was of some use to you you've got to see a little bit of the routing and a few of the little parts that i've used um that's just what i'm using like i say everyone's got their own take on it everyone's got their own touch on it but don't cheap out on the cable don't cheap out on the connections make sure everything's crimped tight and it's all done well um and fuse everything so stay safe see you on the next one